This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome to the channel. This video is all on the types of metamorphism and where they occur in a very simple schematic. So as you can see, I didn't really go to art school, um, but hopefully you can follow along with the diagram and my um, annotations and how I label. So this video is going to cover uh, basically the types, the four types. It's going to cover the main types of metamorphism. It's going to look at the location and as you can probably see by a diagram is that a lot of these locations have overlapping uh, conditions and environments so how these connect and interact these types. All right so the first type we'll just do type one and this corresponds to the other video I did on types of metamorphism, where I just discuss what they are in general. So this is the application of that uh, information. So the one is regional. Don't forget, we have regional and local. Regional is a very large area, and this is usually to do with tectonics. So as you can see, we'll put one right here. We have our compressional stress, and we have our foliation. Okay, so how the folds start off horizontal, layered flat, and then after the compression stress is added, you get this. So in this very large area, so this very large area, we have um, a usually a convergent uh, plate boundary, okay, with an active plate margin. Now with continent hitting continent with similar uh, granitic densities and compositions, you have the formation of orogenies through fold mountains. And Himalaya is a great example. And you get this great amount of temperature and pressure. Now, the temperature and pressure is um, definitely uh, un well, not unique, but uh, is, is a certain characterization of a regional metamorphic rock and how it's formed and there's different grades based on the intensity of temperature and pressure. Now obviously up in the higher echelons of the of this orogeny belt, orogeny fold mountain, uh, you can get a low grade, then you have an intermediate which is a bit deeper down, a bit more pressure, a bit more temperature, and then at the highest temperature and pressure uh, thresholds you have a high grade. So you can actually match up the index minerals and the types of anamorphic rock you get, um, starting with the clay-based uh, mudstone or shale, then slate, as you go further down into it, then you get um, schist and phyllite and gneiss, and eventually you get the, um, the highest grade of metamorphic rock, uh, which would be a uh, migmatite at the end. And you can also look at the minerals that are primarily um, located or found at certain pressures and temperatures and these are called isograids uh, that differentiate between the two different minerals um, and these also can give you an idea of the conditions in the uh, regional metamorphism. As you can see on the uh, right hand side I have put depth I'll see this would be let's say sea level right here with the orogeny going up in elevation same with this volcanic feature right here on the left but we have depths uh, in uh, kilometers, uh, going down 10, 20, down to 50, 60. Now, most of the higher grade metamorphic rock does kind of exist, um, you know, between 40, well, between 10 and 40 kilometers under the under the uh, uh, surface. Now, if you go further down, deeper, you are going to get into conditions that would just create magma uh, in small amounts or just get a very non-hydrous um, metamorphic rock uh, mimotite uh, formed or very, very dense igneous rock. So we can also add in some temperatures. So around this level here would be around 300 degrees Celsius. Uh, halfway down this area here, subduction slab here would be 600. And around where you get the partial mountain would be around 1100. Now some uh, melting of minerals occurs between you know this kind of range 650 to 750 800 and then majority of minerals are going to melt from 1100 down to 1400 
but depends on the pressure. So regional is our main uh, starting point for metamorphism and the types, and it also occurs in that erogeny and convergent plate bound. Now, the next one, I'll put number two right there. Number two is going to be contact. And this is our first example of a local type of metamorphism. Now, contact is the addition of a, uh, an area of magma, a volume of magma, intruding into a pre-existing rock layer, either from the side or maybe from above, but mostly from below, from deeper down, being pushed up by density uh, and pressure below, uh, decompression melting, all that stuff to create magma. And contact defines that when the magma makes contact with the surrounding rock, which is called country rock, it's going to cause metamorphic changes within the country rock because of the heat mostly. Now, some pressure may be involved, and obviously some fluids will definitely be involved. Uh, fluids like water and um, uh, different elements involved with that, with CO2 as well. But you get the fluids to add in uh, that will definitely cause chemical changes. So this would be our beautiful an aureole, and uh, this is your area around the magma intrusion that would have... Um, ever decreasing changes in metamorphic uh, grades uh, the further away you go from the magma so the closer you go the higher grade the horn fells are kind of formed there um, and the further you, further away you go it's less um, intensity of, of, of heat therefore there'll be less changes with the rock so you can also have this um, here so when the the slab subducting slab of this crust is going to melt partially melt around this area here at a certain depth, you're going to have the rising of magma through, okay, and maybe form a secondary volcano right here, but also you get your um, uh, contact metamorphism over here. So put number two right here as well for contact metamorphism. So three, let's go with three. Our three is our dynamic. And again, this is a local um, type of metamorphism dynamic which is to do with fault lines and the area around the fault um, undergone on undergoing pressure and temperature through the stresses and movement uh, to create the uh, metamorphic rock so you might have some fault lines in the subduction so I'll put three right here in subduction zones you might have um, some fault lines caused in the fold and thrust uh, faults in the actual mountain itself uh, like in Himalayas with the uh, recent uh, Nepal earthquake, um, I have some fault lines in there. So again, uh, dynamic metamorphism. Four would be hydrothermal. So hydrothermal would be the addition of magma um, and the addition of water. Let's say here of a uh, subduction zone right here, uh, you know, oceanic hitting continental. And you have the addition of uh, water and CO2 into the magma to cause chemical changes and to accelerate the uh, process of metamorphism within the rock. And you also have, say you have a, um, a mid-ocean ridge, and I include it in the diagram, but if you can imagine it's over here, a mid-ocean ridge, like in the Atlantic, you would have um, uh, hydrothermal uh, metamorphism happen with the rise in magma combining with the water, um, seeping through the cracks and joints in the, uh, the crustal plate, and you get it there. Now, the fifth one is our classic subduction zone. So subduction zone metamorphism would be, again, various grades from uh, simply a burial situation of sedimentary strata in a certain um, environment and the subducting of that strata through different uh, temperatures and pressures. So this would in, uh, increase as we go down in depth and you would have uh, this ever-changing uh, metamorphic facies uh, going through from shallow to deep and the different grades would correspond with the the faces and also the mineral uh, composition the main mineral inde uh, index minerals um, and index metamorphic rocks and there is a sixth one there is a sixth type if we add a meteorite into the mix okay like the kt uh, extinction event, uh, that kind of size, uh, or any kind of size rock, but a large one. Uh, Meteorite is going to hit and impact the Earth's surface. It's going to impact the crust, and that uh, point of impact where intense pressure 
uh, caused by intense impact and shock and also temperature would have a very dramatic effect on the rocks and turn a lot of the immediate area into metamorphic rocks due to this, the simple heat and pressure of the impact. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.